And this is like three years of my life making this movie. Have you ever wondered how people can stay in character and direct the scene at the same time? Yeah, definitely not an easy feat. Let's talk about the actors who managed to do it. Oh my god, dude. Directing has been fucking dope. Number one. Zendaya stars as Rue, the anti-hero of HBO's Euphoria. In season three, she gets to step into the shoes of director for an episode. Interestingly enough, she was supposed to direct an episode in season two, but didn't have enough time to prepare. I was actually supposed to direct episode six, but then I had to act in it. I didn't have enough time, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to this time around. I wanted to have enough time to do it the right way, so next season, probably. Number two, this was a doozy. Olivia Wilde had a great time directing Don't Worry Darling, and was even going to play the lead role before handing it off to Florence Pugh and opting for the smaller role of Bunny. It didn't help that it was in the middle of a pandemic, but they made do throughout all of the restrictions and delays. We were so lucky to be making art in the midst of what was so difficult, like a difficult time for everybody. It was a three year process to create this film, but getting to work with such a stellar ensemble was a major highlight for her. It was really amazing because everyone just bonded. Number three, Grey's Anatomy has been running for 16 seasons. It makes sense that the actors would also get the opportunity to try out some new behind the scenes roles. Ellen Pompeo, who stars as Dr. Meredith Grey, gets her shot in the director's chair in the show's 13th season for the episode, Be Still My Soul. I have a very specific vision, and I see a lot of things that people miss. So I started thinking about it, and it's hard to say no to Debbie Allen, especially when your boss writes a book titled Year of Yes. I just have to try it once, and if I don't like it, I don't have to do it again. Number four, she's a real marvel. Brie Larson starred in Unicorn Store, where she had to learn a whole new bag of tricks when it came to directing herself. She was a bit intimidated by having to direct and act, but realized how much it would help the film if she ended up doing both. When referring to herself as the lead actress, I knew how she was going to play certain scenes. I knew how to cover it because I knew how she was going to play it. I knew she was going to show up on time. I knew she wasn't going to have a problem with the blocking that I'd set up ahead of time. So at the end of the day, her being the star and the director became a huge asset to the movie's success. Number five. After directing 10 episodes of Friends, David Schwimmer went on to direct several other films throughout his career. His first time in the director's chair was in Friends, sixth season for the episode The One on the Last Night, which gained a favorable score from the audience and even shifted the Friends group dynamic. Okay, uh, here's the electric bill. Mm. This is how much we pay for electric? Well, yeah. <laughs> he went on to direct episodes in season seven, eight, and 10. Number six, Bradley Cooper made his directorial debut in the iconic film, A Star Is Born. I always knew I wanted to direct. Uh, I've always grown up uh, making movies in my mind. It was a major box office hit and won acclaim from many film critics. Though getting to the director's chair was no easy feat. It was a long process to get that coupling greenlit by Warner Bros. But in retrospect, I'm glad it wasn't easy. No part of this movie was easy. First of all, it's a guy who's never made a movie making a fourth version of A Star Is Born and a singer who's never made a film. Warner Brothers wanted a screen test with Lady Gaga before they even considered giving the film, as well as Bradley Cooper's directorial ambitions a green light. Number seven, who knew? The former Office actor co-starred alongside his wife, Emily Blunt, in A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place 2. His directorial debut was met with rave reviews from critics and fans alike. She said it's the easiest acting gig she's ever had is having cars drive at her at top speed. It was a unique experience for both he and Emily to get to work together on set, especially on a film that was quite scary to film at times. She was genuinely fear fearing for her life, so that's what I offer as a husband. Number eight, these Broad City stars got to try their hand at directing in the show's fourth season. So then maybe we'll get it in my shot. It's like wrap from me to you, we get that whole thing in wonder. This was their first directorial debut, both of them getting to direct two episodes each. Being stars of the show, they were often in every single scene, so they had to have stand-ins while they took a step back to direct. You have to be in the scene as an actor, but also conscious of the whole scene as a director. Number nine, Neil Patrick Harris has starred as Barney Stinson for nine seasons of How I Met Your Mother. 
In 2010, he directed the episode Jenkins. At the time of the episode, he ended up confessing to TV Guide that he liked directing even more than acting, but had a hard time doing both at the same time. I was doing a scene in the bar with Jason Siegel and Josh Radner, and I'm thinking, great take, love that. Oh, we should speed that part up a little bit. Then I had to quickly think, wait, it's my line. Number 10, he ain't no scrub anymore. Zach Braff made his first debut as a director in 2004 in Garden State, in which he starred alongside Natalie Portman. Since then, he's gone on to direct a number of TV shows and movies, including the legendary sitcom Scrubs. He describes a director as someone who sets the tone and environment on set. It's like you're throwing a wedding. My job is to make sure everyone's having a good time. There might be stress in my head as the wedding planner, but I don't want my guests to know about those stresses. Number 11, Angelina Jolie wears many hats for her film By the Sea. From screenwriter to actor to director, she really did it all. This was the first movie she got to star alongside Brad Pitt in 10 years. I know Brad's triggers and what he can do and what he is thinking about, so I had to step away and just be very careful in how he was directed. The strangest scenes for her to film were the ones where she and Brad had to fight with each other. It was so weird trying to tell him to fight with me better. Number 12. Drew Barrymore starred in the 2009 film Whip It, which also became her directorial debut. Directing was something she's always wanted to dip her toes into. She fought for the film to be made and pulled out everything she's ever learned throughout her career in order to make it happen. For me, it was just a natural progression of taking everything I learned and putting it into something different. It's like being a bank and collecting all that money and never doing anything with it. Number 13. Starring and directing in the HBO show Togetherness would have been a much greater challenge for Mark Duplass if he didn't have his brother, Jay, to help guide him. We really share the same brain, creatively. When I'm in a real emotional scene, I don't have to worry. I really become much less of a director in those moments and rely on Jay to help me through them. Number 14. You absolutely know him as Walter White from Breaking Bad. He had the opportunity to direct three episodes, and as the show's star, it proved to be a challenging juggle of duties. The thing that you have to be cautious about when you're directing yourself is when you're in a scene. You can't watch the other actors, so you need to make sure you're getting what you need. Number 15. Major multitasking was involved in The Party's Just Beginning. Karen Gillan wrote, starred, and directed the film herself. Though you'd think it would be a difficult experience for her, she actually quite enjoyed the whole process and found it to be super natural. It was um, a lot of work, but because I'm so enthusiastic about the story, and I just had the energy for it. All of these performers really had their hands full, taking on sometimes three roles at once. Which actor on the list is your favorite? <laughs> 